We are here at Sun and Fun. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking to Paul Chernike. 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 And Paul is from Rotec. Now, this is a company that we know about. We've seen your products for a long time, Paul. But I know almost nothing other than the fact that it's a round engine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I look at this and I go, well, this is an old fashioned engine. These were on airplanes from a long time ago. First of all, why would you even do an engine that looks like this? What's its advantages? Why would you tackle this project in the first place? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think it goes, we haven't got all day, I guess, but right back in my childhood, I was always fascinated with the antique engines. I was never a jet person, kid. I always looked for the, the round engines at air shows. And in fact, I used to hang around just to watch them start up. Whether they flew or not didn't bother me. So I, I love round just engines. Just love the engine. Huh? And I built a model engine, a radial engine as a, as a, a young man when I was in my 20s. And that uh, led to the creation of this engine, which was spawned because customers contacted me about that model engine and said, hey, we need a bigger one. So I thought I thought about it for a while. And in I, the model field. In though. the model. Okay. No, well, no, the gentleman was actually a home builder. He saw the model engine on the magazine. But he, he said, envisioned that you could do a bigger one. Well, he, he tried me out on it and he, and he won me over. And so we created the seven-cylinder engine in about uh, 1999. It was prototyped, the 2800. And um, it, it pretty much has it's been unchanged since then. And, we saw a gap in the market where people were building antique aircraft, World War One, and uh, sure. biplanes, and, and but there was no radial engine. Sure, and they shoehorn some other engine in it, right. which they sort of fake to look like a round. And it was never quite right. It doesn't sound the same. They have a unique sound to them, I know. Sure. So, but you've got you've got you've got two engines here, and one of them has seven, and one of them has nine cylinders. That's correct. There's a reason for the odd number, isn't there? That's right. The uh, well, again, the odd numbers are purely a geometry issue with uh, uh, all the events and the ignition timing, cam timing. So we could spend a long time explaining it. But yes, all radial engines have an odd number of cylinders: three, five, seven, nine. And but that has to do with physical geometry. It's not, physical not geometry. To do with horses yep. or something. No, it's physical geometry okay. um, to do with ignition and all the timing events. It, it must have an odd number. For, uh, on a single throw crank. If you've got a two row engine, you can have 18 cylinders, but it's actually two rows I of know. nine. Sure, sure, I see, okay. So this is this looks like a big wide engine. Uh, do people with airplanes, if they go, well, I don't know, I, I want the round engine in it, but I, I don't, my fuselage is not going to accommodate that or something. Well, that's not really an issue. We've, we've mounted this engine on, on pit boxes and uh, a, a, a huge array of aircraft. and. The, the width of the engine, or the diameter, which equates to the width of the engine that you're comparing it to, is really not that much wider than a, you know, an O200. I suppose, yeah, yeah, yeah you're not, you're not that you, wide if there. If you've got a side-by-side -side aircraft, it's you, two men standing side-by-side -side are wider than this. No, it works out pretty good. We don't normally have any issues with width with or diameter. Um, making an engine mount to mount this engine on, on an aircraft is not particularly difficult. We've um, mounted hundreds of them. In fact, for the first few years, every engine we sold was a first-type aircraft. Ah, is that so right? So. Well, it looks... I mean, it's a beautiful machining and, and hardware on it. I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. You must have shined this one up, especially. No, well. this is our standard <laughs> engine. We don't do any extra work for our show engines. This is what you're going to get. But is it heavy? Uh, it's a little heavier than the Rotex 912. We'll be using that as a reference. But point. only a little? Well, it looks like it might be 40, 50 pounds more. Well, that's not a lot I mean, more. It, the engine, and the other advantage with the radial too, but it's a bigger engine. Let's not forget this. And how much horsepower are we getting out of this guy? Well, this is a 2.8 liter engine. It okay. it's only turns at about 3,000 RPM. It's geared at 3 to 2. So okay. at 3,000, you'll have 2,000 on the clock. Um, it's a 2.8 liter engine, as I said, and um, yeah, it, it's just it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's twice the size in capacity of a Rotax, more than twice the size. So therefore, it's going to be a yeah. There's bigger. about the 912 is about one. I, I exactly yeah. So yeah, I, I compare this more to an O200. This engine is a little lighter than, than an O200. Light, lighter than an O200. And it's okay. about that's another good form. benchmark yeah. engine for a exactly. lot of people that have exactly. dealt with that. Exactly. Okay, so, and what kind of power does it put out? All right, we've got 110 horsepower 110? here. Okay. It's a geared engine, as I said, so it's got the ability to swing nice large propellers, which is always favourable for radial engines. Seeing this gets mounted on draggy, rag tube aircraft like biplanes, sure, typically sure. slower aircraft. So the gearing and the big prop is a, is a massive advantage. And do you do the cool. prop as well, or do you? We we outsource the propeller, but we can supply okay. them in, in firewall forwards. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, you also do some work with the Jabiru company, not the company, but you supply some stuff, some we, elements. We for make engines. Is that we right? make a few aftermarket products that sort of spawn from the TBI. We developed a throttle body injection system, which fits our engine, and as our engine has the same carburetor mount as the Jabiru, it automatically fit the Jabiru. Oh, okay. And so then Jabiru customers started using our throttle body, and then other engine uh, users uh, with other engines said, hey, what about us? So then we made adapters, and before we knew it, we were building a whole range of throttle bodies. Yeah, so right behind you here, we cool. see some other products that are not just the engine. That's and right. And you sell yeah. just those parts as well. Correct. 
You're kind of doing a lot of this. You're doing all this out of Australia. You got that sound to you. So. Yeah, we're definitely from Australia. <laughs> Melbourne, Australia is where our manufacturing okay. and assembly is done. Now, are you doing all of the manufacturing for this engine, or are you? Well, you know what? Uh, we we used to do everything. Uh, we used to manufacture every single component on both the engines. We used to make all the throttle bodies, which is five different models there. Then we started making the Jabiru liquid-cooled cylinder heads and all the Jabiru aftermarket products, such as ignition. So, I mean, we were making a lot of stuff. So now, in recent years, we've outsourced some of the componentry to take the load off our manufacturing because it was getting it was getting pretty intense. Yeah, it's a lot to do to put all these elements together right. and design it and test it and all the rest. It's of that. a big job. So we've we've uh, over the years started to outsource the manufacturing of the product to help us uh, with our production. But of course, the engines uh, and all the products are all assembled, and some manufacturing is still done in our machine shop, which is glowing white hot most of the time. <laughs> you know, making all this so stuff. So let's put this in context for people. Uh, how many engines have you got flying in the world? How many do you have flying in the in North America? And you can be approximate. This will go on YouTube and on my site and Dave's site and other sure. places. So we have we, these numbers will change, folks. But today, approximately, rough, well, rough we've numbers. been we've been in production since 1999, and in that time, okay. we've produced around about 1,400 units combined, okay. seven to well, nine. 15 years, 1,400 engines. Yeah, about we produce somewhere between about 80 and 100 engines a year at maximum. Okay. Um, they're all hand built, so they a good little business. Yeah, yeah. and the. And how many in North America? I was going to say, yeah, I, I would suggest Roughly. that about 75 to 80 percent of all of our products end up here, particularly oh, the engines. I see. Okay. So there's five, six, seven hundred more uh, engines, I'd say here. Um, lots of flying examples, countless flying examples. So um, yeah, I mean, this is our main market, and that's why we come to Sun and Fun today. And you're in Paradise City here, is where we're doing this particular video. You consider yourself a light aircraft oh. engine company? Yeah, absolutely. Up to what? Let's say. well put it well, in parameters for it. Well, uh, this this has been mounted on aircraft such as the Kitbox, which is a well-known light aircraft. Right. Um, the nine-cylinder engine goes in a slightly bigger aircraft such as a Hat biplane, okay. a Murphy Rebel. So these are still aircraft in the LSA. Yeah, category. they're still light aircraft. On aerodrome airplanes. Aerodrome yeah. airplanes is, a, is another one. Another the World perfect War One replica. For this exactly. Kind of engine, yeah. The World War One replicas with Robert Basley. He's a very uh, he's very supportive of our product. Excellent. Mm. Well, it's a lot of good information about it. I'm sure because I'm so new to rotary engines or, or not rotary engines, but uh, round engines. Um, Radio. There, there must be some things that I didn't ask you that you would normally tell somebody that I don't even know enough to ask. Well, I get what it, what people normally ask me is how many cylinders it's got because I see them count and physically <laughs> count, and I just I come in and say it's got seven cylinders. <laughs> it's of course a four stroke engine. It has one exhaust valve, one inlet valve. Um, it's a planetary reduction gearbox. It's geared at three. And dual ignition, I see. Dual so, ignition, yeah. yep. Comes with a stainless steel exhaust system. It's got a mechanical fuel pump as standard, a 45 amp volt motor, electric start. So there's none of this old time. It's an antique engine, but it's got all the modern. Okay, it's a, it's, a, it's a modern, old looking engine. Exactly. The yeah, manufacturing, yeah. as you can see, is interesting. It's all billet aluminium machine, or aluminum, as you would say. Um, so everything's machined from solid billet. Um, the only castings on the engine, really, are the cylinder heads. Uh -huh. I see those are cast. Yep. And so all of this up here is carburetion? All of this up here is your valve action. So Just inside, valve action. Yeah, so Why is it all connected with hoses? These are, the, these are the drains. So what happens is these push rods that are running inside these push rod covers are pressurized. So oil is uh, okay. pumping up and here. And it's got to go somewhere. And it's got to drain off. These are just and and oil where does drain. that drain off too? I see it goes down to the bottom there. All the way okay. down the bottom there's a little collection point and okay. we have a scavenge pump, mechanical scavenge pump, that draws that oil back to a remote mounted oil tank. Okay. And then recirculates it again after going through a filter, I suppose? Right, through a filter, through a pressure pump, uh, and then onto back into the crankshaft. So it looks complex to me. Now, maybe I say that because I'm look, used to looking at horizontally opposed or V or whatever other shape of engine. I'm probably not seeing the complexity there that I can see here because it's sort of all out in the open. Is this more or less complex than Well, I actually think it's a lot simpler. In really? fact, if you look at engines that have been manufactured over the history of aviation, it'd be, you wouldn't find any more configuration uh, than the radial. The radial was the most used configuration over right? the history of aviation. Yeah, and the reason for I it is not know that you may be thrown a curveball by the high cylinder count, but what you don't see is how simple the, the construction is. It's only got a very simple crankshaft, very short and stout. This part back here very is simple. all simple. Then. Very simple. So the bottom and the work end, is happening out here. Right. Compared to an inline, let's say a V12 or yeah, yeah. a complex, they're a lot more complicated. Crankshaft construction is very simple, very sturdy. And of course, all the cylinders are on the same plane. So it's, it's, it's very short and stout, which lends itself well to 
uh, CAG. And uh, the other advantages too with the radial uh, is with all the cylinders uh, facing, they all get even airflow, and so they, they cool more. Oh quickly. yeah, right, yeah, you'd never have a hot cylinder. No, I mean, more no, than, unless, you, getting... unless you didn't install it right or something. So, so what about TBO and, and maintenance on the engine? Well, the TBO, we recommend a thousand hours, but we've got engines around the world that have gone well past that on condition. And, um, but that's just, a, it was just a ballpark recommendation. A thousand hours is a lot of flying. Yeah, I, it I is. Know, I don't think it's an issue. For most people, that would equate to 10 years or more even. Exactly. So that's a lot of time. And exactly. by then, maybe you ought to have the engine look right. at Right. Maintenance wise, um, look, the engine is so simple to work on. It has a brakeless ignition system, so it's an electronic ignition on the right hand side. On the left hand side, it's brakeless magneto, so no adjustments there. We use regular automotive spark plugs and ignition leads and oil filters, so the regular servicing you should be able to do for under 50 bucks, seriously. Uh, wow. And as far as mechanicals, we have, I mean, you've got to take my word for it, we have very few mechanical issues. And any issues that the customer needs, if they need spare parts, we FedEx them out, they have them within three days. But interestingly, in the entire history of our company, we have only ever replaced, and remember, this, is a, this has got seven cylinders on the on this engine and nine on this one. That's a lot of cylinders and head we've produced. You do the maths. You know, More than 10,000. Right, right, and we've replaced one. Wow. And that's a fact. And if anybody out there can find that I've replaced more than one, I'll give them a free engine. That's So I'm not playing around here. We have replaced one wow. cylinder and barrel in the history of the company. And wow. the reason for that is the high cylinder count means that each cylinder and each uh, is producing less less power than, say, a four-cylinder would. You know, you're dividing your rated horsepower by seven cylinders or nine. So when this engine oh, is running, I see you're making each cylinder work a little less that's hard. Right. Many yeah. hands make light work, and that's what makes these so reliable. That makes a lot of sense. And keeps the temperature down. All right, so you know, I probably haven't even asked all the right questions, but hopefully a few of them. Or hopefully we've stimulated some of our viewers to check this out and ask some more. Sure. Where do we find you on the web? We have They're great... at their computer already, so where do we find you on the web? Well, we're in a great great website. Just just go to uh, www.rotechradialengines.com. Rotech or radial. the other okay. one you can go to is uh, Rotech. Um, aerosport.com. Both those websites will get you the information you need. All right, we'll put that up on the screen for people. I haven't ever flown behind one of these. Maybe I'll get the chance to do that one day. I'd look forward to that. That'd be an exciting experience. Yeah. But there's a lot of information about aircraft that have used this engine and much more available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us here at Sun and Fun. Yep.